In my first video, I made a bunch of new tips for my soldering iron. Actually, I had a plan to make two more, but then disaster struck and, yeah, the drill bit broke and the end of it got stuck inside the hole. So I decided to put these in another video, because the first one was already long enough anyways. Which means in this video I'm gonna figure out a way how to make these soldering tips without breaking too many drill bits, and also maybe I should tell you what kind of soldering tip I'm actually talking about. Well, it's these very thin ones for soldering SMD stuff. Also, I'd like to quickly apologize for my unprofessional use of music in the first video. We all like loud music, but I don't want to blow your eardrums out, so anyway. The idea is to make one of these very thin soldering iron tips you generally use to solder super tiny components. But instead of taking a single long piece of 7 gauge wire and just grinding off all the unnecessary material, it is much easier to just take a shorter piece of it and drill a hole in the end so we can stick in a piece of 15 gauge wire instead. The problem of drilling this hole is that copper is really soft and chewy, so as soon as there is a little bit of pressure towards one direction, the drill bit starts biting into the inner walls of the hole and gets jammed. And because it's a very tiny drill bit and the drill press keeps turning the upper end, it twists it right off. Unfortunately, knowing all this doesn't help drilling anything. The only thing we can try is not to use a drill bit that is bent in the first place and not to put it in any direction. I'm also going to try using some oil this time, even though I don't think it's gonna change anything, because why not? Well, I guess the oil helped, as well as using a straight drill bit. Let's make another one to be sure it isn't just a coincidence. This time I'll try to get the hole a little bit more in center by using the drill press kind of like a lathe to put a dent in the middle for the drill bit to grab onto. Disclaimer, this technique didn't work at all. Now, after successfully solving a problem which apparently didn't even really exist in the first place, let's finish up these soldering tips. For the first one, I'm obviously just going to cut off a piece of 15 gauge copper wire, cramp it in using the vise, and do the final shaping of the tip on the belt sander. It's not the nicest bit you can make, but it'll get the job done and it's very cheap. Now, since most off-the-shelf soldering iron tips are plated with iron and chrome, I kind of want to try putting an iron nail into the second one instead of copper wire. So I'm going to cut and grind off the nail. It's going to be much shorter than the copper version because iron isn't nearly as good of a heat conductor as copper is and theoretically it shouldn't wear down. I'm roughening up the nail to hopefully get it to make a slightly better bond to the copper and I'm also going to use a different method to cramp it in this time because the vise really doesn't work that well at the end of the day. Therefore I'm putting it between the coarse teeth of this pair of pliers and clamping it in the vise really tightly all together. And it turned out quite nice I think. Last step is to sand off the bulge on both sides to make it actually fit into the soldering iron. I am dying to see if this iron tip is going to work, though my guess would be it'll only work on small, not very heat intensive solder joints like floating wires and stuff, because why else wouldn't there be any soldering iron tips on the market 
that are made of iron instead of iron plated copper. Let's just start testing with the one we already know is going to work. In case you're wondering why the copper tip is so ridiculously long, well, as it is not iron plated, it'll erode over time, so this gives me some time to breathe before I have to make another one. As you can see, the copper tip works nicely on LEDs and wires and this middle-sized circuit board pad, though it does get stuck on this really big heat sinking one. Let's switch to the iron tip. At least it takes solder, which means I didn't accidentally pick a stainless steel nail. It also seems to work quite normal when soldering wires to the pins of LEDs, but it doesn't really get that middle-sized pad heated up. Not even speaking of that huge one. So it pretty much behaved like I predicted. Is it worth making a soldering tip from iron? Well I guess if you're making like a fairy light string and you've got a thousand LEDs to solder wires onto, I think yes, because by the time you're done, the copper tip would be completely eaten away, while the iron tip should have stayed the same. If you want to solder PCBs, absolutely not. Apart from that, I can't really tell because I've only ever tried one so far. So there is only one solution. This supposedly is an iron nail. Let's make another soldering tip! This is a conical tip with a beveled end because one really annoying thing about standard conical tips is the fact that the solder always tends to stick to one side on the upper third of the cone, which means you can never really use the extreme end to solder something very small. Plus it's also the very first point it starts to erode at. This one should also be much more capable in transferring the heat to the solder joint than the very small one I made earlier because there is much more material down here for the heat to travel in. Let's compare the performance to the one of this store bought iron plated copper tip. But first I need to polish it to get rid of all the oxide. Well, I was wrong. The conical iron tip doesn't do a much better job in melting the solder on this middle-sized circuit board pad, though it does kind of work if I tilt the soldering iron to get more contact area to the side of the bit, but even then it takes way too long. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the thin one. So that's kind of embarrassing. Honestly, I didn't think iron would be that bad at conducting heat, but obviously it is and there's no reason in making a soldering tip out of it, because it just doesn't work. Especially not since you can just use copper wire and it works just fine, as long as you replace it every so often like I did in my first video. Speaking of which, if you haven't watched it, the link should pop up in the corner. Otherwise, thank you for watching. If you learned something, please drop a like. If you didn't, complain in the comments and I'll see you as soon as possible. Bye!